Good afternoon, folks. I'm Patrick here from Eslin, and today's clip is about building up your vocabulary uh, fast, as fast as possible. Um, and, um, you know, I guess that is something that people uh, really care about because it's essential for uh, speaking or writing or any other activity that you might be involved in uh, when it comes to second language learning. Okay, now, look, it's a fact that the more words you have, the more fluent you are, all right? And the fewer words you have, well, the more time you're going to need to think about what to say in a conversation. And uh, sometimes you do have the ideas, but you don't have the words. And people are not able to make that distinction most of the times. They uh, quickly assume that a person who is not able to speak uh, does not have the ideas. And that hurts, doesn't it? It hurts big time. It can mess with your dignity. It can mess with your, with your confidence. Um, and it can really irritate you and, and lead you to just giving up on the language altogether. If you ask any person, uh, you know, any English teacher, how you can build up your vocabulary. And I'm pretty sure that you're going to get the same tips. Uh, you're going to hear something like, um, you know, watch a movie or, or listen to a song or, or read a book or a magazine or an article or whatever it is. And look, I'm not disputing any of those methods. They all work fine. They're beautiful. But that's not the issue. That's not the problem. The problem is time. See, time is the only thing you don't have a lot of when you happen to be preparing for an English test, like the IELTS or a PTE test or, or a TOEFL test, right? Your time is very limited. So what can you do to build up your vocabulary fast? All right, before I give you my tip, I'm going to tell you something that is very important and you must be aware of, you must know. For adults, it's very hard to remember new words. Very hard to remember new information, new sounds or new words or new shapes or, or anything in general, right? Adults don't have a very strong memory compared to a kid. A kid is, is like a sponge, right? They remember everything they hear, they remember everything they see, it's different. Okay, so sounds do matter when it comes to language learning. If you cannot remember the sounds, you're not going to be able to remember the information you hear and the words that you hear from a source. The sound is like a code, right? It's like a code. And you're not going to be able to access the meaning that is hidden in that word unless you recognize the sound code. The sound code encapsulates a thought, a meaning, an idea. It encapsulates it. And you are supposed to be able to, to recognize, decode that sound to access the information hidden in it. If you were to teach me a word, teach me a word, right? Let's say the word table in two languages in Spanish and Vietnamese, okay? So, just, I got two people. One Spanish, one Vietnamese. I ask the Spanish person to say the word table in Spanish. I'll ask the Vietnamese person to say the word table in Vietnamese. Now, I hear both, but I'm more likely to remember the Spanish version, not the Vietnamese version. Why? Because Spanish, like English, is a Latin-based language. So I'm more familiar with the sound system of the Spanish language, and therefore I'm more, I'm more able to remember the word in Spanish. So remembering the sound is very important for me to remember the word and the meaning of the word, obviously, right? So if that is true, let's take the word information, for example. The word information, all right? Anybody knows information. You see information. You know, you receive information. You ask for information. You know, wherever you go, you see information. 
information is a very important word, and it has now become a part uh, of your vocabulary, okay? Because you're familiar with the sound and word information, you're going to be able to remember the word informational and informative or informer or informed quickly, quicker than um, words like illuminating or instructive or knowledgeable or aware of, etc. You're going to be able to remember those words because you already know the word information. The word information exists in your repertoire. It's easier to build upon it. It's easier to remember words that are related to it. The key is you need to train your ears in the sounds of the language because in, in English, the letter and the sound are completely different. They are disconnected, all right? It, it's a big problem for a lot of learners. You know, when they look at uh, a certain text, a written text, and they try to read it, you know, more often than not, they're not able to read it properly because they're trying to read the letters. They don't know the sounds. They're relying on the letter. And oh boy, is it confusing to really rely on the letter in English because the spelling, spelling and sound are two different worlds. You cannot mix them together. Spelling is spelling and sound is sound. You have to train your ears in the sounds of the language. Those are the natural steps. I mean, those are the natural steps of, of language learning, whether it's your first language or second language or third language or fourth language. It doesn't matter. It's the same process. Babies learn the sounds first. As a matter of fact, you know, babies start with listening. They listen. They do nothing but listen. I mean, imagine they listen 24-7 24, 24 to their mothers. And, and how do their mothers speak with them? You know, they, they speak with them slowly with that singy, songy sort of tune right? Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth like a million times. So the baby is listening to that language, listening without speaking, listening, just listening. And, and it, it's not before the age of, you know, two and a half or three years old before they start speaking. And, and so that's what it is. You have to listen and listen intensively before you're able to speak. Now, I'm not telling you that, you know, you're, you're going to have to listen for three years before you, before you speak. I'm not implying that. I mean, that, that'd be nuts. But what I'm saying is you need intensive listening first before you start speaking. And then uh, as you start speaking, you need to get better at that too before you start reading. And then uh, writing comes last. Let, let's just make it simple, all right? Let me make it simple for you. Unless you are... are Unless you're familiar with the sound system of English, it's going to be hard for you to build up your vocabulary. That's what it is. Plain and simple. All right? If you're pretty familiar with the sound system, if your ears are trained in, in hearing the English sounds, you're going to be able to remember more words, more English words that you hear from people or from TV, or from somewhere else, you're, you're going to be able to remember those words much more easily than if you're not familiar with the sound system. So I've enjoyed giving you that, uh, that little tip, and um, uh, you know, I hope that you enjoyed the clip. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, the link is right there on the screen. Subscribe to it, and, um, and you have a lovely day. See you later. Bye-bye.